Our 2024 F1 livery ratings. Now, before we get into it, we need to mention P1 Live Show. It is coming in less than two months' time. We'd love to see you there. We're going to Bath, Cambridge and London. There are tickets available for all three currently. It's a show where myself and Tommy don't just do a podcast. It's interactive. It's fun. There's prizes. There's, there's lots of stuff that we're planning for this one in particular that will upgrade from the previous ones. So don't worry. If you've been to one before, trust me, you're going to have a great time again. We'll reflect a little bit on the season as well, because of course we would have had uh, a few races. But if you want to come to the P1 Live show, there is a link in the description and all over our social media. We'd love to see you there. Right, let's get into the liveries and start at the back of the grid. Uh, because I feel like it's only fair. Haas, in fact, were the first dry, uh, team sorry, to uh, unveil their car, I guess, technically. Technically, technically I mean, their McLaren. 2024 car, yeah. But we'll start with Haas, and I'm going to lock in a 6 out of 10 for Haas. Uh, now, the, the slander we gave them was, you know, I mean, I feel like we were expecting slightly more. This was the beginning of the car launches, and we were like, oh, a video. This is not a good start. But then again, what do we really expect from Haas? One of the lower teams struggling for money. Are they going to pop loads of money into a car launch and also to redesign a car completely? Probably not. Design-wise, it's probably up there at a 7 or 8 in terms of sleekness. But it's also quite boring. And hence, that's why I've kind of reined it back to a 6 out of 10. It's a clean, as I said, car previously but it's not grabbing any headlines. I've gone for a 5 out of 10 for the Haas livery. Straight down the middle. Similar reasons to you, really, in that I think that it's almost like a 8 out of 10 in terms of, like, composition, if you want to call it that, in terms of, like, how it's, how it's applied. Yeah. But, boy, do they have quite the boring colour scheme. And it doesn't help the fact that there's now an increased carbon and and black we're kind of getting a little bit like there's there's quite a lot um and when you have a, an all black car we've seen other teams you know have a big pop of color and it can look quite cool but has just to have like white and red it's not it's not the most interesting of uh color palettes so from that from that side it's just a bit it's just a bit meh okay let's move to williams now then it feels like ages ago that williams uh launched their car tommy what did you go for I've gone for a 6 out of 10 for the Williams. Changed my mind quite a bit on it, actually. Yeah, um, you have! Holy! Yeah, I know. We saw we saw the Williams quite early on. Now I've seen it, uh, and I actually saw a picture of it compared to last year, and I, I like it a lot less than, than last year's. They used a lot more of the lighter blue last year. And I think, for me, like when I see it now, I actually think that the navy is not really particularly interesting to me like the the dark navy and they don't have like a bright bright color to go with it it's certainly like nice enough but i think it's just a little bit underwhelming and it's getting worse to how it did like a couple of years ago which i actually really really liked how it looked a couple of years ago wow i hope all the williams fans will have tommy for having a, a change of opinion. hey look it's Just not go that and get him. monstrosity from 2021 so consider That's yourself true. lucky that would have been a zero I am going to lock in a 9 out of 10 for Williams because I really like the livery. I think that it's different. It's not a block colour and then has written on it that they've got different shades of blue. Uh, the Duracell thing, I think, still works incredibly well at the top of the car. And I like it. I think it looks really, really slick. I like the different shades of blue. I'm no crazy livery designer, but for me personally, I think it's one of the better looking cars on the grid. So... Well done, Williams. Uh, don't listen to Tom. Do you think you know better than your other F1 friends? Well, now it's time to prove it, as we are using Grid Rival for our F1 Fantasy League. And what's more, the top three from our league will receive a share of $10,000. I knew that would grab your attention. So listen up. Grid Rival is the most in-depth fantasy manager game in existence. With a limited budget, flexible driver contracts, and performance value variation race to race, there is so much to do to perfect your team. Throw in the addition of live chat in your leagues too, you can be sure it will give you entertainment till the very last lap. So what are you waiting for? Download the Grid Rival app on iOS or Android today. Steak is up next. And I've had a little bit of a change of heart of this car. Uh, the more and more I look at it, the more and more I see other cars 
the more I believe and agree with a lot of people online that um, it's essentially some kind of F1 game uh, you know, default <laughs> delivery that you different, get at the yeah. start. Uh, so I'm going to lock in six out of ten for steak. Actually, I, I like the vibrant color. It's a it's it's. I think I was blinded by the color at the start, and I'm like, ooh, especially at the start when the when the cover came off and you saw the front nose, you're like, oh my god, the whole thing's green. That's going to be unbelievable. Then you pull back. And look, I slandered Alpine for a nose that was carbon. Steak's done exactly the same thing, and yet they've not even heard a peep. And then down, and then on the side, like the kind of bad sort of lightning bolt time type looking thing, like just, yeah, I, I'm not actually, I don't think it looks particularly, I don't know, like Haas have done a clean design. I don't think this design from Steak is actually that clean. I just think the color really caught a lot of our attention. So I've gone a little bit back on, on what I originally thought of this car. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to go with a six. I've gone for a eight out of ten for steak. It's a low, it's a low no, eight. No, 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 don't start that. I know, I wish we could do it. Don't start When I was doing these grades, eight. I was like, I really wish it was out of 20 because the, it's it's difficult. But I think this is kind of opposite to, to Haas in terms of the fact that they have an amazing colour palette to work with. And the execution isn't great, um, but I'm glad they've used as much green on it as they have uh, and it really pops against the black the thing that's like downgrading it for me is that bit like you say the the weird lightning bolt it doesn't really match the car at all not the greatest execution but at the moment i'm just um happy that there's going to be a nice bright bold looking car on the grid even if there is quite still quite a bit of carbon on it but um the green certainly stands out okay we now go on to the uh most interesting team alpine tommy what what have you what have you mustered up here with uh, with your number? I've gone for a three out of ten for the blue Alpine. Yeah. What annoys me is like this could have been so good, and I think it's been designed by some famous artists who did the WC livery as well. They did the merchandise, which looks banging. The WC livery looks really good as well. And it really is like a what might have been because they've tried to do something cool with like these geometric shapes. Um, but the biggest letdown for me, because I can see all you going, well, the steak is pretty much the same livery, but uh, it's got yes, blue. Tommy with the and, Twitter uh, voice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the problem is, for me, blue does not stand out against black. Like, it doesn't pop, so the whole thing looks a bit dull. The way they've done, even like the pink around the BWT makes it look a bit, a bit busy and... Yeah, I don't, I don't really like it. I kind of, I wanted to like the fact that they'd done something different because that's always exciting during the season, but just not a, not a fan. And I think actually the more I see it, the more, the more I dislike it. I am going to go for a two out of 10 for Alpine and the uh, normal blue, it's not blue, is it? It's carbon with a... Uh, <laughs> the with carbon a, with a, and carbon and carbon and blue. I think it, it doesn't help either that Alpine had such a banging livery before that this is just a downfall for me. Like, it is such a shame, as you say, Tommy, that they have restricted themselves so aggressively right from the get-go. And it was just such a disappointment. It, as you say, blue does not work when it's been eaten up by the carbon. It just looks like an unfinished car. As much as they've tried to make it work, it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. It literally, like, especially from the top, when I mean, you just look down at the nose, I see hardly any blue whatsoever, and that's supposed to be the blue the blue car. So yeah, that's my uh, opinion on that one. And then we move to the pink version, the Alpine pink version, which I'm also going to give a two out of 10 because it's no different. It's just pink that rather than blue. Like, okay, oh no, scrap it, three, because it actually, you can see a slight bit of color on it, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, I've gone for a six out of 10 for the pink one because I think the pink actually pops on the black quite nicely. And it's amazing because it is the same livery, but blue and black are just is just no, but pink and black I think looks quite cool. It is annoying because I think it could be so much better. And I, I do hate what it stands for, if you like, in terms of the fact that they have, you know, removed something when the pink Alpine is such a vibrant, always such a vibrant and cool car and stands out on the grid and it, and it won't do that as much anymore. But trying to like take that aside, I don't actually mind this one uh, as much. Next up, V-Carb. Oh, 
Yeah. Oh, this one is so difficult. I've gone for an eight out of 10 because I can't unsee the white kind of and red lines over it. And the Torosso is one of, if not my favorite liveries of all time. And to me, all I can see is like a beautiful piece of artwork that a child has just done a diagonal line across in a big aggressive color. And the way that, that it's got the, the way it goes on the nose is like a really square kind of um, block gives me sort of like MS Paint vibes. But because the rest of it is, is so beautiful and I will give them, after just slandering them, I will give them credit the fact that like, they've done a very good job to say essentially their title sponsors appear to be Hugo, Visa, Red Bull, Cash App, Orlin as well, and Orlin as well. Yeah, so they're essentially like, we know how hard I imagine it is for livery designers when they've got marketing teams going, we, you need to do this for us and this for us and this for us. I bet that car was very hard to work on when they've essentially got five big paying sponsors to get right. So it could have been absolutely atrocious and I still think it looks um, pretty nice. I'm just, I'm just still not the biggest fan of the, the white diagonal line across the front and the back. That's a good job nobody asked because I've gone for a <laughs> nine out of 10 because <laughs> I do really like it. I love the metallic uh, element of the car as well, which is something that we don't tend to see all that often anymore. I think the side on angle, they've they've clearly, you know, trying to cook here because they put the car on hard tires. So white walled and then have a red rim um, to try and make the Hugo parts less um, uh, stand out less against, I guess what you're saying. Um, or how it conflicts, but for yeah. me, my eyes, my eyes like what it sees. See, so yeah, well done, VCarb. Congratulations. We now get to Aston Martin. I'm going to lock in an eight out of ten for Aston Martin. Uh, I think it's a beautiful looking car. It's not really changed that much over the last few years. I'm not going to give it a ten or anything like that, mainly because it's a car that I wouldn't have changed. I think the, the, obviously the carbon is eating up the car ever so slightly. So we, we have to we have to downgrade it a little bit. Uh, it's still a very good looking car. They know what they're doing as well with that side profile shot with them on the medium tire with that yellow stripe. You know, they're thinking of all those color matching, beautiful stuff. Uh, but it's a good looking car. Shame about the carbon coming up a little bit and ruining that beautiful green that Aston Martin are so famously known for. Uh, but it is still a, a good looking car. Yeah, I've gone for an eight out of 10. It is uh, the thing that I think this one, maybe a couple of years ago, I think I even gave it. Uh, a 10 out of 10 uh, and I loved that they kind of started adding the electric green because of course they had the the BWT pink which didn't really work with the with the green and sadly and maybe unsurprisingly it's getting less and less of that every year as like you say carbon is eating up because they used to have uh, a lot more of it on the car uh, and it's going a bit more simple uh, and the Aramco sort of rear wing the way that they've got that in full color um is a little bit jarring but it's still a really smart looking car and um yeah aston they're not really gonna you do wonder if they're ever gonna really change a lot lot with it because it is just that brand identity in the british racing green and looks very cool ferrari are next tommy give us your number i have gone want to watch Matt Square for a bit. Um, no, I've gone for a 9 out of 10 for the Ferrari. Yes, I... So, so the thing that stood out to me was those new lines on the car, which yeah. I'm still not, like, in love with. Has it grown on you a little bit, though? I don't mm. even know if it's grown on me because I it was has. trying to, to put my non-biased hat on and think of all the Twitter comments and stuff. And I was thinking last year, I think I gave the Ferrari a nine out of 10. And I was like, do I hate the white and yellow line more than the black cutouts that they had last year that I think ruined the livery a little bit? And I would say no. And I like that there's a lot more red on it now and that they've done the carbon a lot better. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a nice Ferrari. It's not perfect for me actually, like, and um, you can all shout at me saying, you, you want to remove color to make it better. Um, but without the wh white and yellow, uh, might even be a 10. Interesting, because you know, as a, as a Charles Leclerc fan, 
I don't care what you say. But I am also gonna go for a nine out of 10. If that carbon bit at the back that's just solid black was red, that's a 10. It's a 10 for me. It, it, it would work beautifully. I'm, I'm not a fan, obviously, of that. It's very clear that we've not been a fan of a lot of carbon and especially eating up that beloved Ferrari beautiful red. That's the thing that gets to me. As you say, it's much, clean, it's much cleaner than it was last time with that box of black, which I don't really understand why they ever did that. Uh, this one at least merges into the car better than that. But it isn't isn't perfect, but it's still. I mean, literally, Ferrari for me is you know it's a default eight. You, you know, just just plonk that red on the car. You're working with an eight out of ten. It's then what you do with it after that. Okay, let's move to Mercedes. They've gone for a uh, a different look. Uh, they've merged the, the the carbon or black. We don't know exactly how much of it is carbon and what they're actually painting. I'm sure it will be carbon come the time they roll it out. And then um, that merging of silver and then the red. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 because I really like this livery. Uh, I think if I was to pick, it's probably my favourite, actually. Uh, it's not a 10 out of 10. It, I don't look at it and go, that is perfection, but it is very close. Uh, I Yeah, I really like it. The Ineos, I think, as I said in the Mercedes car launch video, has grown on me, that red on the on the top. People love to say, you know, every time I hype the, the Mercedes How car dare you like launched, a black car when you like, don't oh, like another... When you said, you said that the carbon was really bad. Yeah, uh, are you, why do you like it on the Mercedes? You're such a fanboy. Oh, the British bias is showing through. I'm like, no. When Mercedes launched that black car in 2020, it looked absolutely filth. Like it was unreal. And they've made black Beautiful looking colours. car. Yeah, and it's part of their brand now. I've gone for a 9 out of 10 as well for the Mercedes. I think they've done a really, really good job with it. It is very difficult to try and merge two liveries together. Uh, like I said in our, in our podcast, I thought 2021 looked pretty abysmal, to be honest. I really didn't like it the way it was like. They'd done it the other way where the silver was at the back and the black was at the front. Uh, and I still, I still look at that and think it, it just looks terrible. Um, but this is really, really nice the way from the front as well. And and this, this you know, cover those, oh, you don't like the Alpine, blah, blah, blah. But you look, the important image of a Formula One car really is from the front because that is what you see on the, the grid. The starting The start of the yeah. race and, and they're normally coming towards the camera. And that car looks silver, like, you know, because the whole nose is silver. Uh, and they've done a really good job to get quite a lot of colors and Ineos and keep it Patronus and keep it black, but keep it silver. And it looks really, really good. Let's go to McLaren then, who had two car launches because apparently one is is uh, not enough for McLaren. And uh, Tommy, what have you gone for? I have gone for a 10 out of 10 for McLaren. I was looking at this car when I was going through all the, the things and I think it is absolutely perfect. I think it's the best livery on the grid. It is so well done. And again, I can hear like, oh, but they've all they've done is remove the blue. But it is insane to me how much of a difference that makes because I didn't used to really like the chrome wheels either. Like I thought it looked a bit busy when they had light blue because essentially you had orange, light blue, white, and then you had all the chrome colors in as well. And it looked really messy. Whereas I even like the chrome wheels now on it because it's just kind of made it quite simple. I don't think liveries need to be super complicated. And to cover off all the comments about, oh, well, it's quite a lot of carbon. We're covering a lot actually, of comments in this, uh, in this uh, show, aren't we? Yeah, it actually isn't because if you look at it from the front, it is essentially all orange because the front wing's orange, the nose is orange, the rear wing's orange. Uh, so it looks incredible from the front angle. And then the side, I think... Uh, there's literally nothing I would change on it. I think like they've got the the composition right, the the angles to like suit the car and make it look really nice. And black and orange is a, a color combo I love anyway. So yeah, well done, McLaren. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna go for an eight out of ten. Uh, I cannot believe you've dropped a ten out of ten stone cold banger for McLaren. Yeah, I think it's more just standing against the the whole uh, carbon takeover from from cars. I think that I, I would much prefer it you know, a more of that papaya to uh, go around the car a little bit more. Uh, you know, you say that it's all orange on the front and whatnot, I'm sure in the important places, but you look at it on the side, we're lacking a lot of color. Uh, mm, so yeah, not I think really. It, yeah, I mean, there's it's quite a lot of- I'd say it's probably color. like 
a third of it is black. I think we need to go back to school here, my friend. I think, I think it might be more. <laughs> I think it might be more 50, maybe 45% black. Either or, I am allowed to give my opinion. God oh, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> and uh, I, look, eight out of 10 is not a bad grade. It's not oh, like no. I've dropped a four. It's a, it's a, yeah, maybe it'll grow on me over the season when I see it out on track and in the important camera angles. Let's see. But who really cares what our, what our livery ratings are anyway? <laughs> so, it's when, very when cars, true. <laughs> when the cars go out on track, it don't matter what they look like. Finally, Red Bull. I am going to lock in an eight out of 10. Red Bull. I think that it is a it's a Red Bull. <laughs> it's hard to get excited about a Red Bull at this stage of their Red Bull career and, and dynasty and livery, I would say, development, but there really isn't any. We, we spoke about this, how they get away a little bit with the carbon fusing in with the uh, the dark navy. It is a great looking car. It's a Red Bull. I don't think I can give it any higher than an eight, just purely from an excitement perspective here. And also, I can't get over. I mean, we're not even. We're just talking about the liveries here, but I can't get over the, the shoulder. shoulders. I know the shoulder. <laughs> the shoulder as a as an overall car I, it just doesn't look particularly attractive to me. It looks aggressive, but it doesn't. It, I, I don't think it looks particularly very in the nice. Particularly renders, so I think kind it looks of, awful in the renders. Yeah. Honest. So I'm including that in my opinion of an eight out of ten, and, and how much it excites. Me. Yeah, I've gone for an eight out of ten as well for for Red Bull. I think the livery for me as someone that loves this livery and think it's iconic. I think it, it has got worse and worse as they've kind of, and of course they're always going to accept money. So like, who cares? Um, but like, as essentially like Oracle's taken over the side, the buy bit on the rear wing, uh, for me, like the perfect, perfect Red Bull was when you still had it on the side pod and and, and it looked really good there, but it still looks really um, iconic and obviously Navy I mentioned about like I didn't really like that on the Williams but the, the the good thing about Red Bull is it's so they have such a bright color in the yellow and that's a color that we don't see on the grid so it does stand out and you know that that car is there like you you see it and you and it does actually like stand out a lot yeah I mean it's still it's still a very very nice looking livery right and that is it we have finished our driver nope livery ratings for the 2024 grid. Also, P1 Live Show tickets are still available. So please go to the link in the description if you want to find out more, if you want to come to either Cambridge, Bath or London. We'd love to see you there. And that is about it. We'll see you very soon. Cars on track next week. Come on! Bye! Bye.